Hi family. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for popping on here today and watching this. I hope that this word today really inspires you because I want to share with you guys um, what God has revealed to me about why I've been at a crossroads in my life. And I posted last week, uh, who else is at a crossroads? And I've been at a crossroads, you guys, for quite a while. Um, just feeling torn in a lot of different directions, really reflecting on my intentions, really reflecting on patterns that I have, um, really reflecting on why I'm doing certain things, why I believe what I believe, why I'm participating in the things that I'm participating in. And it's not to take away from the things that I was participating in. It's not to label and say that these things were bad or um, that they aren't things of God. But I think every once in a while we all hit this place in our life where we just don't want to be going through the motions anymore. We, I think we all start to wake up to also the fact that sometimes we've been in autopilot. Sometimes we've been just doing and going and believing things because we just thought that's what we're supposed to do. We never really took any time to question it. We never really took any time to just pause and actually assess for ourselves what we really think, believe, think and believe. Why, why am I at this place in my life right now? Why are my relationships where they are right now? Why, why am I at this church? Why am I doing all these things? You know, like what brought me here? And is this really where I'm supposed to be? And if I am, I want to make sure that that's coming from a healthy place and not a broken place. And if it's a season and time for me to move on, I want to make sure I'm moving on because that's a healthy thing. It's not coming from a broken place. And the best advice that somebody ever gave me was when it was actually my mentor in my business. And she said to me, Crystal, if you ever find yourself in a place where you are having a lot of overwhelming emotions, the wisest thing that you could ever do is that it must be condensation. That's annoying. Anyways, sorry, let me block it. Um, she said the wisest thing that you can do so sorry. When you find yourself in a circumstance where you are overwhelmed, when you're feeling like you're suffocating and you can't not breathe, the best thing you can do is be still and wait until you're in a mentally stable and emotional place. And what I want to say to you guys is that there is nothing wrong with you if you are in a season of your life like I find myself in right now, where everything is under the microscope, where I'm realizing that there are things within me that are coming up to the surface, things that I thought I had healed from, things that I thought I had dealt with, sorry, and what a sister in Christ helped me realize today was that I mastered the symptom. I mastered uh, what she referred to as the tree. I mastered the branches. I did not deal with the root. And so in life, we learn to cope. We learn to just pummel through, right? We just, okay, this is, this is this, and this is that, but I'm just going to put my head down and I'm going to pummel through. And what happens is we learn to band-aid. We learn to address the symptoms, but we never stop to do the real work, which is to get to the root of why we are having that symptom. And so I realized that a lot of my childhood traumas were coming up to the surface in my life right now. And it was manifesting itself in a lot of the decisions that I have been making in my adult life. I was making decisions from a very broken space as a little girl that suffered a lot of trauma. And I was taught, I, or I learned early on that if I do what others expect of me, then I get rewarded. And if I think for myself or I deviate from other people's expectations or standards, I get punished. And so I learned early in my adolescence, really starting from the age of three, um, when I was in foster care. I was in abusive foster care homes, you guys, and they would take privileges from me if I wet the bed or if I didn't um, 
like a certain meal they were giving me or if I did things that three and four year olds did, I got punished. Um, and a lot of times I, things were withheld from me that were due to me. Um, if my mom sent me a gift or if I was supposed to have visitation with her, they would hold those things from me. And so I learned very young that if I perform, whether I meant it or not, and let me say this, my intentions in my adult life have always been from a place of purity. I, I just thought that's what you do. You do what people expect. You keep everybody around you happy and there's no drama. But in that, I lost and never really came into my true self. And so in this season where I've really been seeking after the Lord, I've been starting to get in touch with my true self. And I realize that I have these traumas, these little fires that keep, um, that keep, hi Stephanie, that keep getting inflamed in my life and causing me to make decisions and causing me to behave in patterns um, because I'm trying to cope still with this trauma. And so what my friend helped me realize today, because I've been in this place of really feeling stuck. I've been feeling suffocated. I've been feeling um, like I can't breathe. I feel stuck um, in every area of my life right now. And I feel like um, it was just choking me out, you guys. And I was like, Lord, I can't breathe. I feel like any decision I make is going to be the wrong decision. I'm going to let people down, right? Like I'm back in that mindset of worrying more about what other people think and how they feel and, and really abusing and molesting myself emotionally, you know? And I felt bad because I feel broken right now. I've got some broken pieces right now. And I felt ashamed of that. I felt like if I don't have it all together, if I'm not strong, if I'm not being consistent where people think I should be being consistent, then something is desperately wrong with me. And how then can I believe anything that the God had, that God has revealed to me? How do I know it's not just me making these things up? How do I know I'm not crazy or suffering from some type of mental health or whatever? And I just kept praying. I was like, God, please, I just need relief. And God has brought me into a season, you guys, where I'm done performing. I'm done being a yes girl. I'm done doing what other people expect of me. The only person that I care about being obedient to is Jesus Christ. The only person that I want leading and guiding my life is the Holy Spirit. And I don't want to do a thing unless I know it's from God because I know that God is the only person that I can fully trust to have my best interest at heart because as human beings, we are naturally selfish as, and, and even in all of our selflessness, sometimes there is still a root of selfishness and even in our best intentions, even in our best intentions, even in our heart to want to help and serve other people, we can put on other people, um, expectations or standards that aren't for them. Sometimes we try to be the Holy Spirit in other people's lives. Sometimes we try to be the Holy Spirit in our own life. And God wants us to learn to hear his voice. If you're a child of God, you have access to hear God's voice. You have access to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is a real force. It is a real moving force in your life. And so I've started to come in into tune with the, the Spirit of God and having a fuller relationship with Christ. And what my friend helped me to see, you guys, what she helped me to see was that um, God, every single one of us is like a field. Our life, our soul is like a field. And God is the farmer. And God plants seeds of purpose and promise and uh, potential in every single one of his creation. And just like the parable of the tear and the wheat, you guys, Satan comes in unaware, right? He comes in and sneaks in unaware and he plants seeds around God's seeds. And those are called tares. Okay. And so what God showed me when I was fellowshipping with my sister this morning is that in my life and in your life, 
God has planted seeds of promise. God has planted seeds of purpose. And Satan has come in and planted seeds um, of plants to grow up and try to choke out your purpose, your promises, and your identity. And he usually starts young. And he started young with me, you guys, being a victim of, of abuse as a very young, young girl. Being torn away from my mother as a very young, young girl. It was not my mother who abused me, so let me clarify that, okay? But going through things at such a young age where the foundational things of childhood are really implemented, I was being abused. I was being manipulated. I was in relationships with adults who were narcissistic and who had ill intentions toward me. And those were the seeds of Satan that he was planting to choke me out. So now here I am at 37 years old, you guys, feeling like I was having an identity crisis, like a midlife crisis at 37 years old, because these seeds that Satan planted in my childhood have been growing up as tares among the seeds that God has been planting in me. So God has been moving on me, forming me, revealing things to me, but Satan's coming in and he's trying to choke it out. And so God in that parable talks about, um, the, the farmer said to the, said to him, should I just pull out, should I pluck out these tares from among the wheat? And, and Jesus and God said, no, no, only Jesus is qualified to separate on the threshing floor the tares from the wheat. Sorry, you guys, hold on. The tares from the wheat. And so as you pursue a relationship with the Lord, what starts to happen is he starts to give you your own road to Damascus experience. He starts to give you your, your own conversion experience. He starts to give you true deliverance that can't be found anywhere else but in him, you guys. You cannot find true deliverance in organized religion. You cannot find true deliverance in uh, just doing all these kind of works. Um, even if they be good, you can't find deliverance in relationships because re deliverance, true deliverance comes from the Lord because he said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so as I started to walk in a more genuine relationship with the Holy Spirit, God is now bringing up to the surface the wheat, the, the tares that have been trying to choke out the seeds of wheat that God has planted in me and in you. And so it's really a beautiful thing that's happening because God is a God of transformation, you guys. God comes into our life where we are, but he will not leave us the same way that he found us. Each of us is like a piece of coal, okay? And God allows us to go through the fires of life to purify us, to cause the dross and the impurities that are in the coal to fall away from the heat, from the pressure, so that we come out a beautiful diamond, okay? And so it's necessary to find yourself in your own road to Damascus experience where you go from being just a religious person going through the motions, like Paul was a, a Saul, before he was Paul, was a super religious person. He was the most respected Pharisee, you guys. He murdered Christians. He was so devout in his religiousness but the very thing that God delivered Paul from when he gave him the new name was from the spirit of religion. And I believe in this time, God is calling his church, the living organism up out of traditionalism, ceremonialism, going through the acts of, of having a relationship with God, but it's completely void of actually knowing him for yourself. And I know that God has revealed that in me. So all the corruption God has shown me in myself, all the corruption God has shown me in religion, all the corruption that God is showing me in the world is simply God allowing the dross, the impurities to fall away so that I may come into the full calling of who God has created me to be. You see, God says in his word that one plants a seed, another waters, and God grants the increase. It's always the work of God, you guys. And God showed me that I was building up idols in my life. I built up idols. I put people. I put religion. I put what I was doing as far as occupation and my titles in a place of um, idolism in my life because I thought those things gave me value. 
And God has shown me that the person, the only thing that gives me my true value is him. It's him. It's not how good I am. It's not how perfect I am. It's not how together my life is. It's not how many ministries I'm serving on. It's not how many religious ceremonies I participate in. It's not how much money I have or what titles I'm able to uh, collect for myself in this life that give me my value. Why? Because all of those things can be gone in a moment. All of those things are going to pass away. All of those things are not what Christ died and created. And so God has been showing me that he is enough, you guys. And when I can finally accept the truth of who he is to me and who I am into and who I am in him, then I'm able to walk boldly in the things of God because I understand where my authority comes from. I understand where my direction comes from. And I'm no longer looking to man. I'm no longer looking to religion. I'm no longer looking to, to the, um, flattery of man to validate me. And so when you come from a broken place, like I have, it's almost addictive to, desire the validation of man, of those around you and of those that you respect, of those that you love. And even those you don't love, like I would get so crushed if I felt like somebody didn't like me. I would get so crushed if I felt like somebody didn't understand me because I was seeking significance in other people and everybody else is just as broken as I am. That's why we need the Lord. We're all sinners who fall short. We're all broken. None of us are perfect, only Christ. So why am I looking to man to give me something that they have to get for themselves from Jesus when I just need to go to Jesus, right? And so I want to encourage you that if you're in a place in your life where you're at a crossroads, where you're questioning everything, It is a beautiful place to actually be because what's happening is you are finally like I found myself. I, I went to God and I said, I lay down everything, Lord. I lay down every theology, indoctrination, every idol, Lord. I want to know you and I want to know you unadulterated. I want to know what you say about everything. Purge me, Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Expose to me the hidden things of my heart. Break me down in my areas of pride. Break me, Lord. I prayed that prayer months ago and I forgot. And God is faithful to answer. And he's been breaking me. And I thought that it meant I wasn't good enough. I thought it meant like, oh, I'm just a jacked up human being. I, I, you know, I just started looking at all of the things that were wrong with me, all my inconsistencies, all the way that I, ways I may look flaky, all the people I may be letting down. How am I failing as a wife? How am I failing as a mother? Lord, how could you use somebody like me? And then God put it on my heart to create crystal clear ministry. He put it on my heart to create a community of transparent faith where we could just be real about what this walk looks like because it's not pretty, it's not perfect, and it's painful often. But what God showed me is the reason I've been suffering, the reason that I've been hurting, the reason I've been feeling the way I've been feeling is because when something's broken, you guys, you go to the doctor, right? If you break your arm, you go to the doctor and the doctor resets it. And when the doctor resets or if you dislocate a joint, Cynthia, you know about this, right? Like if you dislocate something, you go to the doctor because the doctor is a skilled professional who understands the way the body is supposed to work harmoniously and he can reset what has been broken or he can reset what is out of alignment. But when he resets it, it hurts because he's putting something that got out of alignment back into alignment. And that's what God is doing in my life and many people's believers lives right now is he's resetting us. He's taking the fractured parts of our life and he's resetting that thing and it hurts. It hurts, but it's the beginning of true healing. You guys, not just masking the symptom, because if you get a broken bone, you could just wrap it up in a sling or something like that and mask the symptom. But you, but God is saying to the believers, I want to take you to the root and I want to reset it into its proper alignment. And it hurts. It hurts you guys. Sometimes it feels unbearable, but 
it's the beginning of true healing. It's the beginning of true healing. And one of the things that God told me is that scars are not a reflection of your brokenness. Scars are a reflection of your healing. They're a reminder of what God has brought you through. And so God is resetting my fractures. God is helping me get real with myself because I can't be real with anybody else until I'm real with me first. And I got to be real with him to even be real with myself, right? And he's molding me. You, you know, we read that story in the Bible about the potter, right? How he takes the mold, how he takes the clay and he molds it. And so God is molding me, you guys. He's, he's, re, he's forming me in his perfect will. And when you're being molded, that's uncomfortable. There's pressure, right? There's pressure. And you're taking on a different form. Just like Saul took on a new form in the Lord when he became Paul. Just like that coal takes on a different form when it's gone through its process and it be through the fire and it becomes a diamond. Just like an olive goes through pressure to bring forth the olive oil. So God is forming us, you guys. He's stripping us of our impurities. He's resetting our fractures. He's bringing us into a true relationship with him so that we can have true relationships with one another and not just be going through religious ceremony. That makes no sense for us to be going through religious actions and going home oppressed, going home suffering in silence makes no sense. It's not what Christ died for. Christ did not die for an organization. He died for a living organism, you guys. And I believe that God is resetting the body of Christ. He's putting things back into proper alignment. And he's challenging a lot of our theologies, a lot of our indoctrinations, a lot of our traditions, a lot of things that we have clung to as truth. And God is exposing its corruption. And, and so I just want to encourage you that if God is remold, if God is molding you, if he's transforming you, trust him, trust him, let everything come up to the surface so that God can help you deal with it. And God will lead you to a, to the people that he has placed and equipped to be able to help you through it. And it may not come from where you think it's going to come from. The sister that's helping me is somebody I went to high school with. And I've always been on her page and kind of seen what she was doing. But I never wanted to really look into it. And as God started revealing to me this trauma that's coming up to the surface, he led me right to her and she's always been there. Sometimes God has planted people in our lives, but because it doesn't look or isn't coming from where we think it should come from, we miss it. But God will always put what you need in your path right when you need it. See, God is also showing me what true fellowship is. It's not just the corporate gathering, but it's it's doing day-to-day -day life with other believers in the body, the universal body of Christ. And God has just connected me to some incredible people, you guys. And God can do that for you too. And I know that God is moving in my life. I know that he is, he is getting rid of the tears in my life so that my true ministry is not choked out. And so that I can walk boldly in him, so I can walk confidently in him, so I can speak confidently in him, and so that I can be an instrument that can minister truly to other people about the true transformation that is found and the true freedom that is found in Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. And so trust the process, you guys. If you need to get help, if you need to reach out and get counseling, or you need to reach up to somebody who's already crossed over, do that. There's no shame in help. That's why God puts us in a body so that we don't have to do these things alone, so that we can find comfort and encouragement and correction in people. And sometimes you've got to go to somebody that you don't know. Um, I, I had to reach out to somebody that I, that's not intimately in my life, in my circle, um, even outside of my church fellowship, because, because I needed to have an unbiased, I needed somebody who could give me an unbiased 
Holy Spirit led guidance. Not that those people aren't Holy Spirit led, but they're too much in my life. They're too much. You get what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's hard to go to your mother because she's going to have an emotional bias. She's going to have an emotional influence on what she says. So sometimes it's easier to go to a counselor or go to a teacher or go to somebody who's not in the middle of your, of your field in the middle of your life like that, because they're going to come from a very unbiased point of view. And so sometimes you need help, but sometimes you need help from somebody, um, in the body of Christ that you don't know directly. Um, because for me right now, because I have placed people in positions that they shouldn't have been in and because I'm learning where to put my boundaries, where I begin and where I end. It's hard for me right now to receive sometimes guidance and direction and, and encouragement from people that I know intimately, not everybody, but some people that I've known intimately. Um, it's hard for me to hear them right now because I'm so used to just being a people pleaser or a yes girl to these to some people in my life. And so it's not healthy for me right now to glean that encouragement from them. I can hear it and I receive it, but it's really hard for me to accept it. So I knew I needed to go to a place or to a person who could have some autonomy from my situation and just give me straight up spirit led guidance. So ask God, if you need help, ask him to show you and direct you and to lead you to the proper connections. And he will. Um, it's okay for you to be at a crossroads. It is okay for you to be in a place of pain. It is okay for you to be in a place of questioning. It's okay if your life is not perfect. It's okay if you don't have all the answers, you guys. Because if you turn to the one who does, which is God, He's got you. He's got you. And the process is not going to be pretty all the time, you guys. It's going to hurt. And it's he's forming you. And you're going to take a different shape so that he can use you effectively for his purpose and for his glory. And so that you may also experience life and life more abundantly the way that God has designed for you to. And when God is bringing you into the fullness of who you are and into the fullness of who he is, you guys, you can't always take, actually, you cannot take a lot of things with you. When God is calling you into something, sometimes there's things that he asks for you to leave behind because it's going to hinder, it's going to hinder what he's doing in you and for you and through you. So sometimes there's relationships that are not going to move with you. There are things that you've been involved in that you may be called from. Um, there are emotional things that God is going to purge you of so that you can move powerfully and not be quenched and not be held back. And I believe that's what God is doing with me. And I believe he's not just doing that with me, but he's doing that with a lot, a lot of people. He is shaking up his church and he's saying, Wake up, you guys. Wake up. I'm, I want you to know me. I want you to know my voice. And I want you to follow after me. And trust me at all costs. So I wanted to share with you how God... Um, there's a scripture today, if you follow the Bible U-verse or whatever that's called, that talked about you know, the mercies of God and how they're brand new every morning. And I'm going to tell you right now that weeping does endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. And that scripture does not mean that literally it's going to come tomorrow, but God will give you mercies brand new every day and he will give you encouragement. He will, he will send you a word of encouragement and exhortation, a sister, a brother, a testimony, a dream, a vision. He will send you what he knows that you need for manna today. And so stay encouraged, you guys. Keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling. Keep seeking after the Lord. Ask him to help you hear his voice more clearly. And when you're feeling discouraged, remember, it's okay to reach up for help. But the most important help that you're going to ever receive is from the Lord. Continue to allow him to direct the paths of your step, 
the steps of your path. Continue to allow him to light the way. Continue to walk in step with the Holy Spirit and not move as the Holy Spirit. And be okay with whatever the Lord is moving you in. And trust what he is saying to you. And allow him to purify you, to cleanse you, to consecrate you for the calling and the purpose that he has on your life. Because I promise you that if you are here on this earth, whether you are a believer or not, you are not created by accident. And God has something only for you to do. Okay? And so if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the Savior of the world who gave his life so that we would not have to pay the penalty of our sin because he loved us so much but hated anything that caused separation in our fellowship with him. That he went to the cross on our behalf that we may be restored into a relationship with God. And then he comes into our life through the Holy Spirit and he works out our soul salvation and he brings up to the surface those things that Satan has planted to try to deceive us, to choke us out, to rob us of our identity and our purpose. And he helps us walk with him daily. And one day, you guys, and one day soon, I believe, he's going to come and get his church and we're going to be with him forever in glory. So if you're feeling discouraged, just hold on to God's unchanging hand, cling to the fellowship of the universal body of Christ, and know that God is not far from you. He sees every tear. He knows every hair on your head. And even though sometimes God may feel distant, he is not because his spirit is literally sealed inside of you. And he's placed you in a family of other believers who are here to pray for you and encourage you. So hang tough, you guys. Please continue to keep me in your prayers, and I will do the same. And thank you for tuning in today, and I will see you next time.